Border Collie Rescue Centre New York is used for assessment and rehabilitation of dogs coming into the charity's care. The first assessment they always do is for livestock herding. This enables the centre to gain an understanding of what lies behind the behaviour of the dogs and allows them to separate dogs that need to work sheep from those that have no interest. To enable this, the centre keeps a flock of 50 Swaledale sheep. This small, hardy and flighty breed of hill sheep react well to the dogs and stimulate potential herding abilities. The sheep at the centre are provided by Border Collie Rescue supporters Colin and Mandy Dinsdale. Colin is a shepherd in Teesdale and has also adopted and trained two dogs, Glen and Moss. Moss had lost a leg and only has three, but that hasn't held him back. Periodically, Colin and Mandy come to the centre to exchange the sheep for younger ones. They also provide winter feed, regular checks and care, and cover any veterinary costs. The sheep benefit from grazing in the Vale of York. The grass is richer than on their native Pennine Hills. Border Collie Rescue benefits by having sheep available for assessment and training all the year round, and right on the doorstep. They may miss their hills, but with their help, the centre can make sure working dogs go to the right homes and don't end up as unruly pets. This is Meg. Meg was a sheep dog, but her sheep had to be destroyed because of the outbreak of foot and mouth disease. So Meg suddenly had no sheep and no work to do. And for a bored collie, that can bring stress. Even the short period of time, uh, of two or three months between the stock being culled and her coming to us, she developed this high intense level of hyperactivity, which was what most farmers were fearing would happen to their dogs. Tony was looking for a dog just at the time when Meg came in to Border Collie Rescue. It was at the time when the foot and mouth outbreak was on and, the, and it just seemed sensible to try and re house one and rehome one rather than, uh, than, than uh, breeding another one to do the job. So Meg went to join Tony on his farm, but it took her a while to settle. She was quite unbiddable when we got her, uh, and she just needed to learn that dogs and humans uh, work together. And, and my way of training a dog is to get the dog to, to want to help me, and it was just getting that trust and that, and that going. And, uh... Meg started by working with the cattle, helping to protect Tony from the cows. Cows may be gentle animals, but they are big, and hungry cows could easily trample you in a rush to get at their food. After a few weeks, um, she started working with the cattle, and we had a lot of bull beef on at the time, and she would protect me from the bulls while I was rolling the straw out, and just for that alone, she was... Uh, She'd found a place and, and was earning her keep. And then, then she gently came on and, uh, and she worked sheep or cattle and to, to the standard that I wanted to do. She, we can do anything. Tony came to realise how much he depended on Meg when one day she went missing. About just over a year ago, we have footpath runs right through the middle of the farmyard and some hikers took her off for a walk and neglected to bring her back. And for 48 hours, I thought my right arm had been cut off. That scare made Tony aware that he also needed a second dog. During that period of, of trying to find her and get her back, um, we realised that she wasn't the little pup that, that we were thinking that she was. And we thought it was time that uh, we would approach the Border Collie Rescue again and see if we could get a young dog to, uh, to bring on so that when she's ready for retirement, uh, we have another dog to take over. And that was just over a year ago. And, and we've now got Flash. Uh, and he's come on brilliantly and, and we can work either dog now. Or. 
if we've big day, we work them both together. They're always, I always have them together, but I like to work one dog at a time if, yeah. if we can. He's a much more nervous dog and he's got a great ability, a great natural ability. Um, he's been working, or trying to work since he was a very young age, just a few weeks of age. Um, he's absolutely brilliantly bred. Um, you could get, you would go around, cast out round a flock of sheep, bring a flock of sheep to you, but then you could never get him back to heel again. And, and, and that's been the difficult part. But uh, I mean, he's only a year, just over a year old now, so so we're very, very happy with him. Absolutely brilliant. Yes, a better man could have made a good dog out of him. So, is Tony happy with his two rescued dogs? Yes, sir. We wouldn't be parted. <laughs> Sometimes, when a dog comes into Border Collie Rescue Care, the charity ends up with more than one. This was the case with Sally, who arrived in a very late state of pregnancy and gave birth to eight pups. One of those pups was Flash, who went to Tony Swires. He was the boldest in the litter and was nicknamed Cap due to the black spot on the top of his head. Sally had come from a farm in Cumbria and although young and nervous of strangers, she was very good with other dogs. When the farm business collapsed, her owners decided to gift her to Border Collie Rescue. The sire of the pups was a well-respected champion trials dog and they had turned down several offers. They said they felt the charity would ensure the pups would go to better homes. In spite of her youth, Sally was a patient and protective mother and very quickly had the pups paper trained and well mannered. Their intelligence was obvious. They were as bright as buttons and learned quickly. At only a few weeks of age, they were showing very different personalities. We'll come back to Sally and her pups later. But now, let's see how Gail is progressing with her sheepdog training. <laughs> Gail has been picked to take over from Dot as the Border Collie Rescue lead sheepdog. With Dot's help, Nikki is training her for the job. When we last saw Gail, her exuberance was causing her to put too much pressure on the sheep. Now, Nikki is showing her that she should hold back and teaching her a stop command. Training is done by utilising the natural instincts of dog and sheep. Sheep dogs instinctively position themselves on the opposite side of the sheep in order to fetch them to the handler. Being afraid of a dog, the sheep see the handler as protection and move closer. When the handler stops, the sheep stop and the dog stops to hold them to the handler. At this point, the handler can issue a verbal command to the dog to stop. Then, as the handler moves away, the dog naturally rises to make the sheep follow. The handler then gives a verbal command to walk on. The dog learns to associate commands to actions. Dot keeps in the background, ready to step in if needed. Nikki winds up this training session by allowing Gail her first try at penning the sheep. Unfortunately, Gail's enthusiasm and inexperience get the better of her judgment and not all the sheep end up in the pen. Gail is told to stay put while Nikki gently persuades the last two into the pen and the session is over. As they leave the sheep, Gail is quite pleased with herself and cannot resist a final look back. We will follow more of Gail's progress in episode 3. In episode 3, we meet Molly the search dog, Sally's pups grow bigger, Gail makes more progress and life gets very busy for the centre's volunteers.